Jesus healed many people during his ministry on the earth. In the Old Testament, people were healed by God too, at different times and in different ways. Yahweh has always been a God of healing. In Exodus 15, 26, God told Moses, I am the Lord who heals you. Many times the healing occurred in the presence of a prophet, Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Samuel, and so on. Many scholars wonder if all of the recorded history in the scriptures regarding King Hezekiah is chronological. Assuming the biblical narrative is chronological, this account would take place after the Assyrian siege of Jerusalem, after King Sennacherib returned to Nineveh. Other scholars believe, since the text says, in those days, meaning at the same time as the Assyrian campaign against Jerusalem, that this event happened before the final battle with Sennacherib over Jerusalem. Either way, before or after the battle in lesson four, in this biblical account, Hezekiah falls deathly ill. What would you do if you were in this situation? Let's see what Hezekiah did. 15th year, seventh month. King Hezekiah has fallen ill. He has a large tumor, which is weakening him more and more. He's been confined to bed rest. So soon after Yahweh's victory, the people are quiet in the city, and many of them are bringing prayers and sacrificing animals in the temple on his behalf. This afternoon, Yahweh spoke to me. I loathe to visit the king to bring the news, but I must. As I walked into Hezekiah's chamber, his wife, Hephzibah, which means my delight is in her, was leaving, with tears running down her cheeks. She's the only wife of the king, and she loves him dearly. Sadly, she has not been able to bear him a child, so the king has no heir. This fact weighs heavily on them both, as well as the entire country of Judah. If the, if the king dies, who will take the throne? I walked over to the bed and placed my hand on Hezekiah's arm. I have news, I told him. He looked into my eyes and knew the truth before I said the words. Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Hezekiah rolled over in the bed and faced the wall, seeking privacy to petition Yahweh. Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what was good in your sight. Then Hezekiah wept bitterly. I quietly shut the door, wishing to leave the king with his grief, and headed home. Before I even reached the middle court, God spoke to me again. Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add to your days. Fifteen years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. I pondered this word as I ran toward Hezekiah's chamber. Fifteen more years? What a blessing! An amazing healing was on the way. Also, what a relief was to have a confirmation from Yahweh that the Assyrians would not ever take the city of Jerusalem. The question of their return still haunted the minds of the people of Jerusalem. I entered the king's room with a spring in my step, he looked at me expectantly. And then, he knew instantly, I had good news. I shared God's word with him and waited for his response. Hezekiah's face reflected his relief. His eyes overflowed with tears. What happens now, he said. I will tell your doctors what Yahweh said to do, I replied. So as Yahweh directed, I instructed those attending him to take a lump of the figs and lay it on the tumor. As I was leaving the room, Hezekiah grabbed my arm. He wanted to know if he could have a sign to validate the prophecy, that he would get well. 
live 15 more years. Something to prove that the word truly was from God. Now King Ahaz had built an ancient sun clock in the courtyard of the palace of the kings of Judah. It was an amazing structure with stairs leading up to the top of a wall. The The shadow's movement moving down the stairs was designed to tell time. God let Hezekiah choose a sign, just like he had offered a choice to King Ahaz. Do you wish the shadow to move forward 10 degrees or backward 10 degrees on Ahaz's sun clock? I asked him, grinning. Hezekiah declared, Let the shadow go backward, not forward on the clock. That would be a greater miracle. What happened next was amazing. Together, we peered through Hezekiah's bedchamber window and watching his father's giant clock in the courtyard. Astonished, we gasped as the shadow moved backwards, that is, up the stairs. I'll never forget this day. Three days later, Hezekiah did indeed come up the temple of the Lord today at the time of the morning sacrifice. He is completely healed. Word of his appearance spread quickly throughout Jerusalem. He brought with him a word of testimony he had written on a scroll. He read it out loud to all of us present. I believe he's going to turn it into a song, a song that can be recorded in God's holy book, a song that can be sung to the children of the remnant of Judah, a new song, a song of praise for Yahweh, a song about his love, his faithfulness, and his power. In the song, He explains how bitterly sad he was due to his death sentence. But then he goes in to tell how he cried out to God in prayer. My eyes fail from looking upward, O Lord. I am oppressed. Undertake for me. Then the song records how the Lord promised to restore Hezekiah and let him live. He praises Yahweh for saving his soul from the pit of corruption. Hezekiah did not want to die. He wanted to be alive. He wanted to be present with all of us to thank Yahweh. He desired to praise Yahweh with singing, to hope for his truth, and to pledge to teach the generations to come the truth of the Lord. Hezekiah's got a lot of really neat things. And one's uh, the three miracles, you know, the 185,000 men dying overnight. Um, Then Hezekiah uh, gets a terminal prognosis. Hezekiah, you're done. You're not going to be here very long. Go so get your house in order, the Scripture tells us. And he prays because he wants, to, he wants to be here. I want to stay. I don't want to go. I want to watch things. I want to be a part of all this. But what he didn't realize is that when he decided to put all his faith in, in the Lord, just like when we put our faith in Christ, that we are going to live. And we are going to live eternally. And... Uh, so it's easier to let go of these things of the world when you realize you have a kingdom perspective and you focus on eternity instead of the temperate. Because whether it's a week, a month, a year, or 15 years like Hezekiah, sooner or later, that time of your life is going to come to an end and it will be all about eternity. So I think uh, the third miracle was, of course, the clock going, uh, time going backwards on the sundial, which is another really neat uh, part of the scriptures. So if we have a kingdom perspective, we can't worry about the temporal. Why did God choose to extend the life of Hezekiah? If Hezekiah had not prayed, would he have been healed? What was it about Hezekiah's prayer that made it so effective? Here are a few thoughts. First of all, Hezekiah passed this test. In a time of trial, Hezekiah prayed. He asked God to remember. In the Hebrew, this word does not mean simply to recall, but focus your attention upon and act. Help God do something. Second, again, this prayer revealed what was in Hezekiah's heart. He knew Yahweh had the strength and power to heal him. He had faith to know it could be done. Third, he knew he could not possibly solve this problem alone. He petitioned God, undertake for me, save me. Isn't this what Jesus, our Savior, asks us to do? To pray, to have faith in him for salvation, 
to humbly admit we are nothing in ourselves and cry out to him as Hezekiah did, undertake for me, save me. Lastly, he pledged to testify of God's saving love and power to the generations to come. Are we not to do the same? Are we not to praise and thank him all of our days? Are we not to share with our children and grandchildren the love of Yahweh? Hezekiah's prayer is a beautiful picture of God's saving grace. He did not heal Hezekiah because of Hezekiah's righteousness, but because of Hezekiah's declared faith in God's grace and mercy. I love the scripture, not by works of righteousness that we have done, but by God's tender mercies, he saved us. And what of the miracle of the sundial? Everyone in Judah knew of the miraculous healing of the king. They had seen the sun's shadow move themselves. Yahweh was with them. Who is this God who has the power to move the very heavens? May his glory be known on the entire earth. Jesus told his disciples that if we prayed in faith, our prayers could move mountains. This prayer not only resulted in Hezekiah being physically healed, but we will see in the next lesson, God was about to move in a big way. He was about to pour out his favor upon Hezekiah, Jerusalem, and all Judah. Don't miss lesson six. And the lover of my soul Creator God, He's Yahweh